I said that we will start with Surah Yusuf. And the most distinctive feature of this in Quran is that if you look at Bible, Old Testament, in the chapter of Genesis, where the story of Hazrat Yusuf is given under the name of Joseph, you'll find that Hazrat Yusuf or Joseph is portrayed as a selfish, tyrannical, unjust king. who amassed wealth for his own self and did not care for others. And when the Jews came to the Prophet and said, tell us how it happened that the descendants of Yaqub migrated from Damascus to Egypt and Hazrat, our Prophet knew what they portrayed Yusuf as, this whole surah is in exact and direct contrast with the way Yusuf has been portrayed in Old Testament. And here there is a very important answer to the Christians who normally say that Quran has copied the Bible. Because whatever is there in Bible, Quran has copied. The copy means you copy word for word or at least idea for idea. But when the same subject is tackled diametrically opposed to what they have said and what they believe, then we have to consider that there is some originality in Quran where Allah in His mercy has tried to correct the mistakes which people have brought into Bible by interpolations, by introducing things which Allah did not say. So Allah begins this way. إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ This is how the whole story begins. And recall when Yusuf told his father, O oh father, I have dreamt that eleven stars together with the sun and the moon, bow down before me in humility. <coughs> this, is the word, this is the dream which Hazrat Yusuf al-Islam related to his father. Remember that we acknowledge dream, and dreams are of two types, dreams which are called malakuti, that means dreams which are rahmani, dreams which have a message, Dreams of premonition, dreams of warning, dreams of presaging, that means telling you what will happen next. If you all remember, Simon Freud has written the whole book on dreams. We are not discussing that aspect, where he has written as to how many types of dreams men dream and why. We are not discussing why, because if a if a father has promised his son a cycle and does not give it to him, and then he dreams that he is already cycling. <laughs> it happens to all of us. True. This is called the dream of wishful thinking. And if a boy is going to sit for exam or a girl, he or she will dream that she has already passed. These are all dreams and there are types and types of dreams which Simon Freud has written in his book, The Dreams. We have discussed this with the ulama and the ulama have divided this into very simple two categories. One is Rahmani and one is Shaitani. The dream which have absolutely no meaning, the sultry dream, at night you dream that you have got wings and you are flying, yeah? that you are in a beautiful Rolls Royce, that, that suddenly you have got a windfall of cash, or even you start fighting, and suddenly sometimes you even shout, the thief has come to catch you and there is no one, it's only your pillow which is on your neck. So things can happen which may not be of any use whatsoever. These are called shaitani. Sometimes we have certain types of food we eat, 
we have tummy full at night and then we go to sleep. Naturally, the vapor that rises inside and the gas will create all sorts of problems. And you will dream. Then, then you come to Mullah Sahib and say, I have dreamt. Well, if the Mullah is going to listen to the dreams alone, according to my experience, if I were to pay heed to the dreams, I will have no other work to do. Everyone comes with a dream. Some of them meaningless, just desultory. But sometimes there is a dream which gives you a premonition, that is a warning in advance. And it happens. It presages. Or it gives you a hint into something which is forgotten. Or even the arwah, that means those souls of the dead will come and tell you that this is something that we need and you haven't done. A son or a daughter might dream, mother or father coming to say that I owe so much money to so and so I forgot to say. Please pay it up. These are the dreams. I have left my salat, qawa. Please do it on my behalf. I haven't been to hajj when it was wajib for me. Kindly do it for me. Our ulama have written books and books. And those of you who are lucky may even dream to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Aimma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because when the Prophet said, Man ra'ani faqad ra'ani, whoever sees me in the dream has actually seen me. He hasn't seen a ghost. So when you see him, if you are lucky, and most of you could be mu'mineen, ladies and gents, you saw the Prophet, or you saw the Imam, or you saw any Nabi, you are lucky. These are the true dreams. And sometimes there is a dream of Basharat that is giving you good news. That is the type of dream that Hazrat Yusuf salam, has dreamt that inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban wa shamsa wal qamara ra'aytuhum li sajideen I saw them portraying before me themselves in all humility. This sajda itself here does not mean sajda the way we do. It means being humble, prostrating, bowing down before me. Immediately as he said this, as he told his father this, قال يا بني لا تخصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيد لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين. Oh my small one, the in Arabic language, any noun which is converted to the فعيل that means on that wasn't, which is converted, it means small. Like sa'atun means a watch or a clock. Suwaya means a small. Asa means a watch, walking stick. Usayya means small. Ibnun is a son. Bunayya is a small son. And when you say that, when the father calls his son Bunayya, by making it small, in our language, Gujarati also, we. I don't know whether I should say this or not, because I don't want this to get current. But in our elden days, our father used to say, Hey, Babu, Manyao. <laughs> or a young girl is called, Hey, baby, Manyao. But that goes, she grows older, it becomes baby only. <laughs> and Babu only. We don't want that. You see, Bachu. So we have those things. You see, these are the words which denote affection towards the young one. And Bunayya, Mullah Muhsin Faiz Kashani in Tafsir Safi says that the very fact that Yaqub said, Ya Bunayya, oh my young one, denotes that he loved him most and that Yusuf was very young. Both of them, that he was very young and this Bunayya itself the word used, Ya Bunayya, O oh my young one, do not relate this dream to your brothers. They will hatch a plot against you because Shaitan is an open enemy of man. Well, 
what would happen? The principal thing involved here is hasad, envy and jealousy. It is a disease which can bring brothers against brothers. Yusuf's brothers, father is warning his son that if you will relate this to your brothers, they will hatch a plot against you because shaitan is the open enemy of mankind. That means they will be envious and they will be jealous because there is something extraordinary here. What was it? <clears throat> Yusuf salam, was extraordinarily handsome. There was a physical beauty. There was, his features were excellent, good. Of all the children Ayakub had, his mother was also different. His mother was different. The mother of our other brothers was a different lady. The name given of Yusuf's mother is Rahil. That was the name. Now, he was born of a different mother, that is one thing. Second thing, that he was extraordinarily beautiful and handsome. Two, third thing, he was the father's favorite child. And the envious brothers could not tolerate this. Now, if he said that I have dreamt that the eleven stars and even the sun and the moon prostrate before me, this would add fuel to the fire. Because they will now start talking among themselves, okay, this young man who has already won the favor of our child is now trying to impress our father that he is extraordinary, that he has dreamt to dream that sun and moon prostrate before you. So there will be a problem. Quran is teaching us here and this is a story which has got a moral in this, this is the lesson in it, that when people start being jealous of each other and envious for the ni'mat that you have, I try to burn myself. Why should you have that? Then remember that it can start a new discord, it can start factions, it can start unnecessary quarrels, it can start anything, even in the family even among the brothers. Mawla Ali alayhi salam says, <laughs> that the only bad quality in mankind, where a person who does it, or practices it, himself is affected worst, is hasad. You find him getting thinner and thinner, doesn't eat, does not see any happiness anywhere. Ask him what is happening. Uske paas bohat ho gaya God has given him too much. Now human qualities are different. We envy each other for what? Sometimes the excellence that Allah has given you becomes a bala for you. I roshaniye taba tu barman bala shudi. Sometimes, if you have good quality in you, you find that it is working against you. You have wealth, Allah has given you. You find people uneasy. You have health, a good physique, problem. Beauty and handsomeness, again problem. Husn and Jamal. You can have good quality of knowledge, for example, ilm, people are in problem with you. People have respect for you, you become a respectable person, people have problem again. Why? Influence, problem. So you find that people cannot assimilate this problem and when they start practicing this envy, then they fall into so many problems. One. Immediately as hasad enters into my mind, I start ribat, I start tohmat, and it can also lead me to killing someone because I just cannot match. Now here I must make it very clear that if my son came to me and said that Mr. Kanji's son or Manik's son in my school has passed in first division 
and I should like to pass in first division also. That is not Hassan. What I will tell him is that, right, they both have deserved. You work hard, and inshallah you will pass. The boy has read dua just now, dua ya wasila. And if younger one comes to me and says, I would like to read the way Suhail reads, because he reads very well, that doesn't mean that he is Hasid. I will have to tell him, work hard. Learn the way he reads, and inshallah you will also read, or perhaps even better. That is not Hasid. Hasad is something else. Oh, Mullah, Muhs Mullah Hussain Kashifi was one of the ulama who wrote a book. He said that when Fir'aun said that he was God, Fir'aun said he was Allah, he was God. One day the water, the sector of Nile, which he governed, because of scarcity of rain, that part of Nile dried up. So the people came to him and said, if you are God and you are, we believe in you, we would like to have water again flowing. Now he knew that this he could not do. So he went into his private chamber and went into sajda and said, Ya Allah, you know my limitations and you know my sin. I promise you I will not do it again. But at the moment, for the sake of my integrity, allow the water to flow. Save my face. And the water started flowing. He came out and he forgot what he had told Allah. And he said, do you see? That is my power. Over. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take that revenge. I always told you, he is not a teacher who is, who is sitting with a, with a rod in his hand to hit you immediately. No. Imam alayhi salam says, people are in a haste to take revenge because they fear that the enemy might run away. But in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's case, there is no question of running away. La yumkinul firaru min hukumatik. Therefore he gives time. After two, three years, again the water dried up. Now, People came and said, we have a precedent. You did it last time. You can do it again. Do it. Now, he went back into his private chamber. This time he shed some tears also. He said, Ya Allah, you know my limitations and you also know my weakness. I will not do it again, I promise. Toba. <laughs> I promise I will not do it again. And the water started flowing again. Again he came out and he forgot. It is typical of my life as I see it myself, I don't know about you, how many times I have said, Ya Allah, I will not do it. And when he forgives me, and he releases me of this problem, I come out and I forget. And I do it the same. When it happened for the third time, as he was in his private chamber supplicating and praying, somebody knocked the door. So he was disturbed and he said, who is at the door? And the fellow said, may Allah curse him who believes that he is a God, does not know who is at the door. <laughs> Open up, I am your guru. Shaitan himself entered. He said, who are you? He said, I, I, I am responsible for everything. You sit down. Who told you to say that you are Allah? Do you know what Allah or Godhead means? Huh? I did not do such that to Adam, but I saw Adam being created before my eyes and I have never claimed to be God. And you who cannot do anything, you are claiming that you are God, don't you feel ashamed? How often will you say this to Allah that forgive me? So he said, he said, I believe that uh, you and I are the worst people on earth. So Shaitan said, no, 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 no. There is one, another fellow who is worse than you and I. He said, who? He said, look. In the particular location, there is a man. In his neighborhood, there is his neighbor who has got a good cow, who produces 
abundant milk, more than normally expected. And this man looks at that cow, and within himself is uneasy. Hi, 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 hi. So much milk, such a good cow. And every day he doesn't sleep. He can't do anything. So I went to him. Shaitan says, I went to him and I told him, don't worry. Why do you spoil your days and nights? Huh? I will get you a cow like that one. You start milking and sell. And he looked at me and said, you have understood me. I don't want it. I don't want it to be with him. I don't care whether I have it or I don't have. I don't want him to have it. So this is hasad, where the man is actually praying that you be devastated. He doesn't want. He wants to see you perish. And you can immediately understand what happens when we start having this sort of attitude towards people, that whether I have it or we don't have, but this man must not have it. And this is what Yaqub tells him. Yusuf, do not relate this dream now to him. To them, your brothers, Fayakidu Lakakaida, they will start hatching a plot. There will be jealousy and envy, it is already there. It will be strengthened further. In Shaitana, Lil Insani Aduvum Mubin, Shaitan is a very, very clear enemy of mankind. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.